Hi all, I have another fascinating and instructive game of Magnus Carlsen Trade today. This was against Azamat Utegelev, played in the World Rapid Championship of 2019, so just last year. So the World Rapid Championship uh, was actually the 2019 King Salman FIDE World Rapid Championship, a 15-round Swiss Open held at Luzinki Stadium, Moscow, Russia, 26th to 28th of December. It had 158 grandmasters competing in it, including the defending champion, Daniel Dubov. So the prize fund was $350,000, with $60,000 to the winner. Time control, 15 minutes per play for all moves, with a 10-second increment added from move one. Magnus actually won the tournament. Uh, it was his third title with 11 and a half out of 15. Let's have a look at one of the magnificent games here. So E4 from Magnus. We have the Scandinavian defence. So Azamat uh, playing this. A little bit controversial. It's not, it's not that popular at the Super Grandmaster level, but Magnus has punted it himself on occasion. E takes, queen takes, knight c3, and we see the trendy queen d6. This has been trending up in recent years as an alternative to queen a5 or queen d8. We have d4, c6. Another move here which has been seen quite a lot is knight f6, as you might expect. And if knight f3, a6, this is another interesting way of playing the possession. For example, here, uh, it's thought to be a small edge for white still though this kind of thing small edge so anyway c6 we have knight f3 knight f6 knight e5 the knight goes straight into e5 here so this deprives bishop g4 from black uh, that that would have been maybe an interesting pin and there's also you know a setup of pressure on f7 potentially or knight c4 with a tempo gain there's things to look out for with the knight on e5 it's not just uh, stopping bishop g4 we have knight bd7 and in fact knight c4 is used here tempo gainer queen c7 and now actually a4 uh this is a very interesting move queen f3 has been seen before a bit and it's thought that after knight b6 bishop f4 queen d7 you see that the pawn is on a7 here and after knight takes can, can capture back but that's getting active rook there and this position is thought to be about equal interestingly uh, Magnus's move a4 has some implications if it encourages black to play a5 that does weaken that b6 square so things like knight b6 will be a looser knight on b6 and black actually did play a5 uh, so that's interesting if g6 g3 for example bishop g7 bishop g2 this game is following uh judith polgar against tvarkov and that actually ended in uh, a draw actually in 53 moves so yeah there are interesting stem games around here uh, okay so um and also let me just point you out something else knight d5 pardon me after a4 Instead of a5, knight d5 is actually being played by Magnus Carlsen himself, believe it or not. Uh, so if we look at bishop d3, g6, queen f3, this is actually Caruana against Magnus Carlsen in the Baku Olympiad of 2016, which I believe Magnus, he went undefeated in that Olympiad. So this is a bit of a surprising weapon of choice with the black pieces against uh, one of the strongest uh, competitors and Magnus got uh, a very good position with the black pieces pretty solid Queens came off here and it looks ultra solid in fact Magnus played a magnificent tactic here Bishop takes c3 so with the idea that uh, c4 is loose and, and basically essentially uh, equalized here and a draw was agreed pretty soon from here let's just have a quick look here so Magnus has actually used this Scandinavian line to draw with black at the Olympiad of 2016. Yeah, with knight d5. So that's a really interesting reply to this a4. Uh, so that was bishop d3. If knight takes d5, just for those interested theoretically, uh, here there's actually bishop b4 check. White can't afford c3 because of taking and then either winning the rook or this bishop. 
so if white has to play uh, bishop d2, black should be pretty solid. Maybe it's slightly better for white, but it's pretty solid for black. So very, very interesting. So a4, though in this game we see a5. So what are the downsides here of a5? Are they able to be tapped into by Magnus Carlsen compared to his move, knight d5? We have queen f3 here. And now knight b6. Uh, here actually, you know, g g6, for example, let's follow g6 as an alternative bishop f4. There might actually be d5 with a small edge. This this is quite a dangerous break in the center. Well, it's getting quite dangerous pressure down the central uh, the central files in this situation. This is just an example. Um, you might think, well, why does Black have to like give up b6? There's on, there's great pressure. Yeah, this structure is under great pressure. If Bishop a6, for example, okay, Black's clinging on, but White's White's got a huge amount of pressure coming up. So yeah, there's there's interesting situations with g6. That's another natural looking move. But knight b6 challenging the knight a little bit. Bishop f4. So the queen has to protect b6 here. Goes back to d8. And we see actually a very interesting move here, position A. Uh, can you guess if, if I give you 10 seconds, what would you play with white? A nice positional move here. Okay, um, yeah, not uh, not protecting this pawn with rook d1, but actually bishop e5 puts, it's a defensive and aggressive kind of move at the same time, supporting d4, putting pressure on that diagonal. We see knight bd5. Uh, here, if bishop g4, also, yeah, rook d1 would run into bishop g4, this, this skewer line, that wouldn't be too clever, potentially. Queen g3 here, though, is possible, and then d5, and then this continuation, for example, uh, favors white if white gets dynamic pressure like this it's going to be in white's favor in fact a5 as you can see is a bit of a liability bishop can come back so um okay so knight bd5 magnus takes that knight takes and now just does play c3 stopping any knight b4 idea there might be a knight b4 idea if bishop d3 the knight might come to b4 even so, you know, white technically is, is standing very well especially if black has to play an ugly looking move like f6 just to get on with things. Um, White's well, going to be better here, significantly, in fact. Uh, you know, it's a bit inconvenient to the king. Um, so, yeah, it's 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 tricky. So, c c3, anyway, stabilizing against knight b4. Knight f6. We have here bishop d3. Very, very comfortable position for white. Bishop e6. Magnus castles. Bishop takes c4, bishop takes c4, e6. Queen g3, this sets up a, a nice battery here. So getting that common square c7 and also pressure on g7. It's very difficult, the king's still in the center. Black has some major issues here. Black played g6 in this position. It's a very tricky position. Black doesn't really want to weaken more dark squares than necessary. But if knight h5, maybe the queen goes to h3. And now just f4 going in for f5, it looks like, you know, ripping open this light square bishop, you know, which hasn't got a counterpart. As soon as f5 is played, that's going to be really dangerous. Um, but if we look at knight d5 instead, again, you know, white's standing very well here. Uh, very, very comfortable position. So anyway, g6 was, was chosen. And actually, um, Magnus, Magnus's intuition, he played a very, very good move intuitively. And there's actually a move though, super clinical, the computers find, which really uh, <laughs> changed the whole context of the possession. The black king's in the center. And so Magnus played a really, really good move anyway, F4, but there's a super accurate move. I wonder if you can guess the super accurate move for 200 points. He does say, Magnus has been quoted, if you look at that quotation, of course, analysis can sometimes give more accurate results. He totally acknowledges this. Remember, this is a, a rapid time control anyway. So, you know, he, he says in that quote, yeah, more accurate results than intuition. But usually it's a lot of work. You know, make this, he's pacing himself for this tournament. It's, it's a big multi-round tournament. It can be completely exhausting. If you're calculating too much, you could damage your results in, in the next game or, or the next games or the next day. So I normally do what my intuition tells me to do most of the time. 
it, uh, thinking is just to double check. So he plays this intuitive move f4, but can you see the clinical move here for white? Okay, the clinical move here changes the whole context of the position in a way. d5, it liberates uh, pieces uh, quite significantly. Uh, it puts huge pressure on the black position. For example, if c takes, then that kind of liberates the bishop to be able to use b5, which is a killer here, because the knight come back, can't go back to the rook. And here, there's another liberating move, which changes the whole context of the position again, not just the move itself. Uh, c4. Uh, the point of here, it liberates the queen, you know, for this lethal queen a3 check. This is the kind of thing you could pick up if you do detailed analysis. I mean, it looks good anyway, in intuitively c4, but it actually concretely queen a3. This whole the whole thing's changed now. The whole position is, is totally destructive for black. <laughs> it, it, black wouldn't last too long here, <laughs> you know. <laughs> it's 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 over, yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's that's a really really crushing uh, continuation, uh, super crushing continuation. If e takes rook f e one, and there's no way to answer the discovered checks, you know. Here, just take here the knight's pinned. It's it's, it's devastation. Uh, if bishop g7, just trying to ignore this d5, then just taking, winning two pawns, it's devastation. Yeah, there are sometimes super clinical moves, of course, in this rapid time control. Uh, but bishop, okay, bishop g7 was playing here, but this is a little bit of a slip up to f4, maybe more accurate, bishop e7. But even so, white here can get a great position. The bishops are really pointing quite aggressively to the black king side, even in this more accurate defense there's rook f5 and white has a very very promising attacking position for example like this it's devastating stuff in this position you might wonder how does this queen sacrifice work it is fascinating actually rook takes f7 rook takes f7 king g8 white has an absolutely killer move here and i tell my students so uh, generally you know check all checks but actually there's a, there's a little caveat there might not technically be checked, but there might be a kind of block check to check out, which is fundamentally check if it wasn't slightly blocked. So that's my clue to you. If I give you 10 seconds, well, how does white actually win here? What's the winning move in this position? There's one super crushing move here, believe it or not. If I give you 10 seconds to pause the video, what would you play here? Okay, it's actually bishop c4, so it's, it would have been a check if it wasn't for the uh, the rook on f7, but it's, it's really lethal. It actually creates some common squares like g8. So, for example, b6, just to just, just see what it's about, check, and then rook g8 is checkmate. Uh, how does black actually defend uh, this, this concept anyway? Uh, so if the best is uh, to play bishop f6, then white is regaining the material with interest. Bishop takes f6. And now, yeah, there's just lethal threats. Black would have to give up the queen. If uh, queen e8, then uh, check. And again, we can just go there. Or the other way as well. We can play the double check and mate. So yeah, it's it's pretty lethal stuff in that variation. So that was that was with the more accurate, apparently more accurate, bishop e7. So f4 pretty, is pretty strong. You know, the whole idea of using the bishops like that against the king, it's pretty strong. In the game, the slightly inferior bishop g7 was used, actually. Bishop g7. f5 is super, super strong here. We have e takes f5. If black dead castle here, then f takes e6. This is just devastation, as you might expect. So um, f5, so e takes f5. Can black survive this? Well, there's a very, very important move here, played by Magnus. Can you guess? 10 seconds here for 100 points. Okay, tempo gaining, bishop c7, using that battery. Queen c8 was played. Uh, yeah, you might think, well, what about knight e4, you know, that could be pinned and, and it's kind of devastating. I don't want to show you the tactic there, just, just 
just it's sort of in the game as well though so Queen C8 Queen D6 and now this is used here so I'm about to show you the tactical idea Rook AE1 the Black King is stranded in the center here and black plays queen d7 it's a hopeless possession guess what white plays here 10 seconds white to play and win here okay yeah rook takes e4 yeah, the classic soft spot f7 is exploited and it's winning the queen and you might think well two rooks for the queen not in this position queen d7 check black actually resigned if king f6 then you know bishop e5 check is at least winning the bishop but in fact white can just go for the king here as well pretty shortly after take the bishop and then go for the king well you know it's absolutely checkmating for sure pretty soon so yeah crushing win in that scandinavian variation that's not to say that variation is bad you, you can try the knight d5 against a4 as magnus colson he drew of uh caron and the olympiad of baku 2000 uh, you know uh, in earlier yeah so uh yeah fascinating uh, game this trendy you know scandinavian is very very interesting to explore it's nice to have these trends in opening theory but here yeah the scandinavian was completely uh, demolished crushed by Magnus Carlsen in this world rapid championship he was totally on form and yeah he got his third you know world rapid champion title as well so congratulations to him on winning this tournament so crushingly okay and you might want to check out insights from Magnus himself his first ever course on chessable lots and lots of video footage from Magnus himself going over his great insights that he had and for that great Magnus touch that we all can try and emulate sometimes or maybe occasionally hopefully so Kings Crusher TV if you look at that link slash Magnus course we put that in that'd be great check that out it's really uh, the first time you know a world champion has done a major course like this interactive with video contents etc okay comments questions like shares appreciated thanks very much chess is simple you just make the right moves